Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be exploring the largest galaxy we've ever discovered, known as IC1101, and try to find life here. Let's see if we can use Space Engine to discover any kind of life in this galaxy, and welcome to What The Math. So we've actually explored this galaxy a few times and we've even gone inside and found the supermassive black hole in one of the previous videos. But today I really wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to actually use the principles of the so-called Drake equation and basically uh, the equation that kind of predicts life out there in the universe. And uh, try to see if we can use this equation, which is actually already implemented in Space Engine, to try to discover some kind of life on the inside. Now, we're still quite far away from the actual galaxy. We're currently at a distance of 7 million light years. But because this galaxy is so large, we can actually start anywhere. But I really would like to start right in the middle. Very, 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 very close to the central supermassive black hole. So we're going to go jump into this uh, really, really large galaxy, which is currently the record holder for the largest galaxy we've ever seen. There is like 100 trillion stars here. Trillion. That's about a thousand or even more times more than our own Milky Way. This galaxy is also uh, about at least 10 times bigger in terms of the actual uh, radius than the Milky Way. Although in this particular simulation, it is actually something like 30 times bigger. And we're moving right in the middle of this. Uh, a lot of stars here are actually really old. They're ancient. They're over 10 billion years old. And for the most part, when it comes to actual um, types of stars, a lot of these are actually red dwarfs. And that also implies that there's maybe a chance, some chance at least, that we might be able to discover some kind of life somewhere around some sort of a red dwarf in this galaxy. All right, so we're approaching the central globular cluster. I think it's this blob right there. Yeah, definitely that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to stop right next to it. As you can see, there's a lot of dust here. It's really, really hard to see anything. We might need to actually decrease um, magnitude a little bit just so we can see something. And right from this region, we're going to start looking for life using Space Engine, of course. Here, if I go into Filter Settings, and I basically just keep everything the same, and just change this here, give me any kind of life, any kind of life at all. Actually, let's just start with organic life. It doesn't have to be uh, exotic. And we'll just click on OK. And, uh, OK, at 10 light years, nothing. Let's change it to 100. And do the search one more time. And look at that. Just like that, we found quite a lot of planets with life on it. Now, this is out of 9,200 stars. And interestingly, because of the way that the game calculates probability or you know, possibility of life on planets, this actually gives us a lot of hope for finding life out there. And obviously, this is organic life. We can do the same thing for um, the more exotic life, which is not organic. Let's start with organic though. Let's let's actually pick. So once this starts or stops searching, we want to see. Okay, so we have 466 um, planets with life in the middle of this galaxy out of 9,228. That is actually quite a lot. So let's see if we can find. Okay, so there's, there's a few with two life, two uh, two planets with life. Let's see if we can find three. Yeah, there we go. This this particular system has three planets with life on it. That's kind of cool. That's actually pretty insane. Uh, as you can see, most of these planets are type M, with some being type K. These are all basically red dwarfs. Uh, there is an F uh, star. This is actually a little bit more similar to our own sun. And there's even a G type star, which is very, very similar to our sun. Uh, but with almost uh, majority of these being red dwarfs, we're going to go into this one here. Let's see what we actually find there. So let's, let's go and jump into it. This is a red dwarf, uh, very close to the central black hole, actually. And 
it's in the global cluster where the central black hole is as well. This is actually very interesting because I didn't expect to find so many planets with life here. Alright, so this is what this star looks like. It's a little bit funky, actually. It doesn't have a shape. Um, if you decrease luminosity, you'll see that there is maybe some central region that's basically a core. But I think for the most part, this has kind of turned into this amorphous blob, which is not really good for life, but what can you do? There's also a lot of objects orbiting around this star, which I'm presuming are smaller planetoids and asteroids. Uh, but what I am interested in is what else it has. So here we go. We have... Wow, this is really interesting. So we have two planets here. One of them is actually a Jupiter-like gas giant. So this object, which I'm going to try to help you see by decreasing luminosity here. This object right here. And by the way, the reason it's so kind of yellowish here is really because of all of the space dust in this particular uh, part of universe. Basically, this galaxy is filled with dust and it's also filled with really ancient uh, yellowish worlds. But anyway, so this sub-Jupiter actually has what seems to be... Uh, okay, it has two moons. It has two moons with life on them. So it's not actual... It's not the actual uh, uh, Jupiter... It's not the actual gas giant. It's the planets around it. This has organic unicellular subglacial life, basically underneath the ice. So this is the moon of that particular planet with life underneath the ice, kind of like what we think maybe Enceladus and Europa ha have, if one day we might be able to discover life there. And this here has also uh, organic multicellular subglacial life. Both of them are kind of similar. So both of these are basically kind of like Europa and Enceladus. Um, then we have this other object. Let's go see what this other object is. That's called Airless uh, Mini Aquaria. And here we have Oh, once again, subglacial unicellular life. Interesting. But this is a planet, actually. And here we have, once again, life underneath the ice layer on top. And you can kind of see the moon passing in front of this planet right now. This is very, very interesting. Uh, but not super exciting, I guess, because all of this life is underneath the ice, and we unfortunately can't really get there. Now, what if we take a look at uh, one of the more sun-like objects? Let's go into the G-class. There's a large moon uh, passing right now. Uh, so let's let's see if we can... Okay, we have a G6. Is there a G5 anywhere? Yeah, G5 right there. Two planets with life on it. So G5 is very similar to what our sun is like. And this yellow dwarf, which basically is pretty much almost the same mass as our sun, maybe a little bit more massive, uh, like 1%, 2% more massive, has two planets. And actually, some of them are very beautiful. Look at this beautiful, unusual brown dwarf. Wow, it has a brown dwarf in the system. That's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so we're looking at this first. This is a cold Jupiter that has a moon that also, oh, once again, subglacial life yet again. A lot of subglacial life. And as you can see, this actually is based on the prediction we currently have, where we think that a lot of these um, a lot of these glacial planets, a lot of these pl planets that have, or moons that is, that have um, ice cover on them, will probably have liquid ocean underneath. And inside of this ocean, there might be um, life. Uh, we have a super oceanic aquaria here, which actually kind of resembles Earth except it has a lot more water, liquid water. Uh, and surprisingly, this has no life whatsoever. Even though the temperature here is actually very comfortable, 10... No, sorry, minus 23 degrees Celsius. Okay, not as comfortable. But, oh, here we go, we found terrestrial life, finally. This object, uh, temperate desertic subterra with life, is essentially what we were looking for. This object seems to be very, very Earth-like. The temperature here is 5 degrees Celsius. It has organic multicellular terrestrial life right on the surface. Now, I don't really know if we'll be able to see it because I don't really think the game generates uh, life on all of the planets, usually. Uh, but for all we know, maybe this is it. Maybe these little patches are what life would be like on this particular planet. And standing on the surface of this planet, this is actually how the skies would look like 
incredible, very, very different from what you observe from the planet Earth. Extremely, extremely different colors here. Uh, interestingly, there's not enough atmosphere here. There's only about 5% atmosphere of what we have on Earth. But I guess this is enough to create this unusual life formation, which I think is this, this green stuff. Maybe it's kind of like similar to algae on Earth. All right, so we found uh, regular organic life. Let's look for some crazy um, exotic life. I'm going to jump in here again. Filter settings. And this time, we want to find unusual exotic life. So this would be things like silicates and uh, maybe even other um, atoms and molecules that could create some kind of life. And as you can see, we're not finding as much, but definitely finding some as well. And this is based on um, other theories that speculate that we could have life where carbon is replaced with other molecules. Like for example, the most common one would be um, uh, silicon, because silicon actually has very, very similar um, features to carbon. And it looks like here, all of these are red dwarfs. And it looks like all of these... Oh, okay, this is this is not a red dwarf. This is more similar to our own sun. It's, a, it's an orange dwarf. We found 12 planets with exotic life. And here, we're going to jump to this one. I think this is probably going to be the more interesting one. This is what this planet... Uh, this is what the star looks like. It's about 63% the mass of our own sun. And the object that has life is, oh, it's actually a gas giant this time. This has exotic multicellular aerial life, which is very, very cool. So this unusual object that has really beautiful rings actually has life in the atmosphere. Now, we think that this is maybe also what we have on Venus. As a matter of fact, in the last few years, scientists started to discover really, really unusual patterns in the Venusian atmosphere, detecting things like uh, methane that shouldn't really be there, and even um, organic oxygen. And so some sp people started speculating that maybe, just maybe, there is actually life in the clouds of Venus, kind of like the life that we have in here, in this unusual gas giant. So here you can't really see anything because basically gas giants in the space engine don't really have any surface and we don't really see any life, actual, actual life in the clouds. So maybe let's, let's jump somewhere else. Let's see what else we can find. Maybe we can find some kind of a more common, more typical life. So like, for example, right here, we seem to have exotic multicellular marine and also terrestrial life. So this is a little bit more interesting. This very, very cool looking planet with really unusual rings, which most likely formed because one of the moons probably approached too close to the planet and basically uh, fell apart and turned into rings. Um, we think this is what's going to happen to one of the moons of Mars uh, in the next few uh, hundred million years. This unusual planet seems to have both terrestrial and marine life, and it's not organic. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to see it on the surface. We can definitely try. Okay, so maybe this is it. This is a very, very unusual uh, feature that you obviously will probably not find on our own planet Earth. But this kind of looks like the lifelike formation that I expected to find here. Um, possibly algae-like as well. Uh, smaller organisms, multicellular organisms that created these kind of patterns. Although it's kind of hard to say. And also, it's very unusual that this planet is very reflective and very shiny. You can see it sparkling in the distance. So maybe just maybe this life also creates some sort of unusual pattern on the surface that makes it sparkle. Although maybe it's just ice. Well, looks like this is it. This is kind of all I wanted to do in this particular video. I wanted to look around for different types of life in the largest galaxy we've ever discovered. And as you can see, based on mathematics alone, we might be able to discover quite a lot of very unusual life there. That also means that in our own galaxy, we'll definitely find a lot of stuff as well. So we definitely have to keep looking. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and we'll definitely come back to this galaxy again and do some other interesting things here. See you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.